Hey everyone, this is Dr. August D. Oliveira, and I'm excited to talk about a little different program uh, that we use for uh, guided surgery and 3D printing our own surgical guides called uh, Dentique or Dent IQ. I'm not quite sure exactly how it's pronounced. Um, it is an awesome program. It is free. Um, STL exports for 3D printing your guides are $20 a piece. Um, lots of software out there and lots of really good software out there. Uh, one beef I have had is a lot of them are really, really hard to follow. They uh, are just not intuitive. Um, so hopefully you'll find that this one is a great one. So let's get started. Um, so what you do is actually you download this uh, from 3dii.net net and it's dentique guide um, we'll go ahead and just hit enter and log in uh, we're going to start a new patient and so patient id we're going to skip um, we'll just go ahead and call this upper molar and we'll give it a date let's just give it today and hit ok we can leave a description if we wanted to and we're going to click new case um, as you can see, the graphics are really cool and very, very simple. Um, so this patient has is uh, has number 14 broken off at the gum line. Um, she's missing number 15. Um, so what we want to do is uh, plan a crown and also plan an implant. And we're going to do a crown down implant plan. So we're just going to go ahead and click on the two. Click on dental prosthesis, and the indication is going to be a crown. Uh, we're also going to click on planning, and the indication is going to be implant planning and surgical guide. You can certainly just use this to plan the implant placement and do it non-guided, but we want to do it guided, so let's do it. Okay. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, we have this really cool to toolbar. Um, the next step. Um, is sort of outlined here. So we're going to click the next one. It's going to ask us to load in our comb beam data and our upper scan data. So we'll go ahead and click on this and I will find my file on my desktop and hit open. Just click on one of the DICOM files and it's going to load in. I think what you'll see is the graphics, uh, especially the rendering, are really, really nice and clean. Um, things you don't usually find in free software. So you can see here we've got uh, the skull. Um, we'll go ahead and zoom in. The controls are the same as Mesh Mixer. Uh, right mouse button rotates, left mouse button selects middle mouse button pans or zooms. So we're broken off here. We're now going to uh, bring in our scan data. And this is Linda upper jaw. Give it a little bit of time. It should display it as a box down here just to let you know that you uploaded the correct file. And sure enough, Here's our Cirex scan that we did. So next step, we're going to put the two pieces together. You can see here that our uh, skull looks pretty messy, and we want to go ahead and change that. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and select this. We've got some noise we want to take care of, and we can change the Hounsfields units to make sure that this looks like something that we can match up. We just want to go ahead and take a little bit of the bone off so that we can see the shapes of the teeth and maybe give it just a little bit more bone. So just about right there. Okay, so now we're going to select common points on each one. And we can go ahead and get these both into sort of the same position so that we can see them well. And so we'll go ahead and move this here. And so we're going to single click, single click. And let's go ahead and do the canine single click and single click. I think we only need about three points. So we'll move it to the other side. And uh, let's do the canine as well. So single click and single click. It's going to start working. Um, I'm not sure if it gives you one more. Let's see if it gives you one more option. No, nope, it only gives you three points. But we can see here we've matched these up pretty good. Okay, we're off to the next step. The next step is tooth removal. This is really a cool step. So here we have a little bit left of the prep. It's fractured off here. So I'm just going to outline where we're going to cut. So we're just going to mark lines around the tooth to be removed. Double click to end it. 
and you can see it went ahead and cut that out for us. So that's a really helpful feature. Um, next, we're gonna go ahead and plan our tooth. So it sticks a tooth somewhere in here, and we wanna move that over. Uh, we have the contralateral, uh, number three, and we can get a lot of good data from that. So we can see here, we obviously need to scale this up. So we'll just grab a hold of these points to scale it this way, scale it this way. I wonder what this does. This kind of moves it over, scale it back out this way, make it more or less the same shape. Move that in just a little bit. We can look at it from the buckle. Looks like I could stand to rotate this a little to the mesial. We'll just grab a hold of that, move that over. We want our cusp tips to line up, and it looks like our cusp tips are there. Maybe it could be rotated a little bit clockwise. So great. We have our tooth planned here. Maybe just make that a little bit wider. And we're golden. Next, we're going to plan our implant. Now, in this version, for some reason, it does not have... Um, does not have uh, the implants in there. We have to kind of put it in here. Um, so we're going to want to go ahead and do our panoramic curve. So we're going to click on draw curve and just scroll up to where we can see the bone. And we're just going to draw our panoramic curve. And this is just amazing because most software uh, makes it really complicated to draw the panoramic curve. And we can move these points in a little bit, make them a little cooler. Okay. So now we've got a pan, but you can see it's a little bit fuzzy. We can take this now and take it down to one slice, and we can kind of move around here and see where we're working. Okay, so we've got a lot of information here. We can now click over on plan our implant. And we can choose to have our CT turned on if we want to, so we can see that data as well. Uh, or we can just go ahead and turn that off. I like to turn it off, it just makes things a little more clean. But we're gonna go ahead and add an implant now. And we don't have any implants loaded in, unfortunately, so I'm just gonna have to select it. So in this case, I was hoping to get a 5.7 by 10 millimeter implant and just hit apply and it automatically sticks it right through the tooth. And so you can see here, we do have some issues. So we can go ahead and grab this implant and put it back up here. We can rotate the implant with the top of the tooth stationary. We can look at it now in the cross-sectional image and see where we are. So I might wanna move that a little bit more lingual and maybe tip it a little bit more buckle so I'm still in the center of the tooth. And that looks really good to me. Right off the bat we can see that we're in the center maybe tipped a little bit too much to the mesial so let's back that out a little bit. And move it on about here. So now we're in the center and we're less tipped to the mesial. Next, we're going to select a sleeve. And in this case, I'm using an implant direct sleeve. It's 5.7 millimeters on the outer diameter and the height is 4.5 millimeters. It's going to hit apply. Now there's something called the offset. And what the offset is, is the distance between the apex of the tooth and um, the apex of the drill, I'm sorry, uh, you subtract off the length of the implant minus the handle and minus the lip that might be on your guide sleeve. So in that case here, my drill is 23.5 millimeters. I'm subtracting out 10 millimeters for the length of the implant and 1.5 millimeters for the guide sleeve and 0.5 millimeters for the lip. Um, so that gives me 12 millimeters. Um, so my offset should be 11.5 millimeters. Let me just go ahead and minimize some of these boxes so we can see that just a little bit better. 
And so the number here that they have is eight millimeters and I'm going to move my sleeve until I get to 11.5. And here we are at 11.5. So 11.5 is gonna be the height of my guide. Really easy to work with. Okay, next we're gonna generate a surgical guide. And so in this case here, we have to set the insertion direction and I'm going to set the insertion direction from my current view. We're gonna draw the guide and I'm going to draw sort of a three quarter length guide. I, I do like to go to the contralateral side. So we're just going to go ahead and start here and just click around Maybe over to the premolar. You can move over here and just click and double click here. So now we have this done. Our guide thickness is going to be two millimeters. Our offset from teeth to guide is the amount of spacer. So that's 100 microns. The offset from sleeve to guide is the space on either side of the guide sleeve, which is 50 microns. Okay, when we're done, we just go ahead and click generate surgical guide. Takes a little bit of time and I apologize for the wait here. It's gotta think. Okay, here's our guide um, and we can start to move around here. Um, this little thing here, let's see if we can turn this off. This is offset cylinder and close it off. So here's our guide sleeve. Uh, you can see here we it's nice kind of thick guide sleeve, so we're all good. What I wanna do now though, is I wanna put a viewing window here and also label the patient. So all we have to do is click on view window. You just literally add a box and you can now take this box and expand it and now play with it a little bit, rotate it around. move it down into the guide. And then once we hit okay, it's gonna cut a little hole in the guide. Yeah, let's just kind of move that down into it a little bit. There we go. Okay, now we can label the patient. So we can just, in this case here, click add, just say, in this case, patient's name is Linda and just click. And there it is, that's all there is to it. Okay, once you're done, it's gonna ask create surgical guide. For some reason, my window didn't work, so let's try the window again. Oh, there it is right there. There it is. So I got a window to look through, and of course it took off my patient's name, so let's go ahead and add that. So, add Linda. Cool. So it looks like you have to do it in spots. So now we have our guide, we're ready to export it. So we can go over here to the results. Uh, you just have to say that everything is cool. And check this out, this is really good. You get a planning report that's really extensive as to how that implant is going in. It talks about the bone density of the implant, where that implant is in space, planning summary, the size, the sleeve offset, um, everything you really need. So we can export that as a PDF if we want to. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and export the mesh files and call this Linda. And now we can go ahead and open up our printer software. In this case, we'll go ahead and print this out with Rayware. So 
So here's our guide. And we can go ahead now and move it around. In this case, I want the intaglio up. And we can generate our supports. And send it to the printer. And so in this case here, uh, with the Moonray software, we have a choice of different types of materials. Uh, Next Dent Ortho Clear is a good one. Also, the Surgical Guide is another good one. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening.